Subscribe our channel and press bell icon to get the notification of new video. Like this video. Join our WhatsApp group to get daily latest updates. It's totally free. Part 1 Now you have some time to read questions 1 to 10. Oh, hello. I'm ringing about some problems I'm having with my apartment. Yes, of course. If I can just get a few details first. What's your name? Don Chester. How do you spell that? C-H-E-S-T-E-R. OK. And the address? Apartment 4, 18 Ruby Lane. Ruby Lane. And that's in? In Newbridge. Oh, yes. I know the one. Could I ask how long is the lease? It's for a year. And you moved in on? Last week. On 24th May. Good, thanks. Now, what are the problems you found? Well, nothing too serious, you know, but a few things that have been building up over a few days. Yes, of course. Well, the first thing is the fridge. The seal on the door is decayed, and we have a small child and need to keep milk cool, so we need to get that done straight away. OK, that's the fridge for immediate repair. And then there's a little problem with the gas water heater. Uh-huh. The switch is broken. Right. It's not serious and we can still use it. But if you can send somebody over in the next couple of weeks or so, that'd be great. OK, I've got that. Then we're worried about the front windows. Are they broken? No, but there are no blinds on them. And you know, with privacy these days. And when would you like those done? Oh, it's not really urgent. But there are only thin curtains on the windows, and people are walking past. Yes. We'll have those done for you by next week. Don't worry. And then there's the front door lock. It's getting quite annoying. It often jams, and we sometimes have to fiddle with it for minutes before we can get in the apartment. I'd really like to get that fixed up right away. That's no problem. And then the last thing is the shower curtain. It's torn. Oh, right. We can get a new one and have it to you in the next week, if that's all right with you. Yes, that's OK. Anything else? No, that's all. OK, fine. What we'll do now is get someone over to you this afternoon, if you're home. Well, I'll be out for a short while. OK. Tell us your preferred times. Well, the best time is about two o'clock. I'd have to check that with him. And if he can't get there then, what would be your second preference? Oh, any time up to 6pm would be fine. OK, I've got that. Great. Thanks very much. That's fine. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a recorded message giving information about an English hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Welcome to the Bridge Hotel Information Line. The Bridge Hotel is part of the Compact Group, which is a large association of family-owned hotels offering a warm, friendly atmosphere 
and high-quality service at competitive prices. All of them cater for a wide range of people, from business to leisure clients. Set in a quiet residential area on the attractive outskirts of Belford, about three miles from the city centre, the Bridge Hotel is a popular choice for conferences. After recent refurbishment and expansion, it now has 25 double rooms and 20 singles. All 45 are en suite with TV and coffee and tea making facilities. The Bridge Hotel is set in three and a half hectares of grounds with an open air swimming pool and four tennis courts. There is also a newly opened gym with fitness suite, which is considered one of the best equipped in the area. Non-resident membership is available. We have a fully licensed restaurant for residents and non-residents, which provides a wide range of dishes with a particular focus on dishes from around the world. For the discerning business customer, we have designated business rooms with phone links allowing full internet access. Our conference facilities cater for up to 200 delegates and we are able to offer transport to guests to and from Birmingham Airport at a small extra cost. Before you hear the rest of the message, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. There now follows information about short break packages. Welcome to the Bridge Hotel Short Breaks Information Line. We offer three packages, two-day, three-day and five-day. The two-day costs £75 per person per night and includes full cooked breakfast and evening entertainment. Very popular for weekend getaways. The three-day break costs £60 per person per night and in addition to offers for the two-day break includes one four-course dinner. This allows guests to enjoy the full range of hotel facilities. The five-day break costs £52 per person per night and in addition to offers from the two- and three-day breaks includes free beauty therapy on two days and a full-day pass to a golf club. This package is particularly popular with couples who want a completely relaxing break. If you would like more information about these special packages, call extension 3469 to speak to our customer service manager, John Martin. Thank you for calling the Bridge Hotel information line. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear three students talking about their study programs. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Hi, Elaine. I was hoping I'd see you here. How are things? All right. You? Uh, not bad, but I'm beginning to worry about that assignment. What? The one on theory and practice? Yes. Uh, when's it got to be in by? Uh, next Thursday. And I just can't get to grips with it. Yes, it's a tricky one. 
I'm hoping to get down to it over the weekend. I tell you what, there's Dinah. <laughs> Let's see if she has any pearls of wisdom on the subject. She took the theory and practice option last year, didn't she? And got an A plus for it, I think. How does she do it? Oh, let's ask her. Hi, Dinah. Hard at work. Not exactly. The lecture's just been cancelled, so I've suddenly got a free morning on my hands. Oh, that's lucky. You've met Neil, haven't you? Yes. We were just talking about the theory and practice assignment we've got to hand in next. Can we just pick your brains a moment? How far have you got with it? Well, still at the reading stage, really. Are you? Well, one bit of advice I definitely give is not to spend hours wading through that massive volume by Jesperson. It really isn't very helpful. I think the only reason they keep it on the reading list is that the library has got so many copies of it. Personally, I found the essential source was Parisi. Have you read her yet? Parisi? I don't think so. That's a great book. It must be on your reading list. Right. Another one I found very useful. Was the article called something like "Practical Theories" by、mm, was it Williams or Willard? Yes, Willard. Also, if you want to look at case studies, that small book of Ron Brown's has got some interesting stuff in. You know the one I mean? Ron Brown. Yes, I looked for it in the library, but it was out on loan. Before you hear the rest of the conversation. You have some time to look at questions twenty-four to thirty. Yes, it's a very popular book. Did you try the recall system? The what? Don't you use the recall system? You should, you know. You just have to take a pink slip from any of the librarians' desks, fill the details of the book in, put your departmental address on the back, your departmental address, not your home address, and hand the slip in at the information desk. Then check the mail in your department twice a day, say at ten in the morning and three in the afternoon. For a slip telling you the book is ready to collect. Last week, I recalled a book at lunchtime and got the slip telling me it was ready just four hours later. That was exceptional. It usually takes about three days. I didn't know you could do that. Is it expensive? No. There's a nominal charge, twenty-five pence a book, I think.、Mm -hmm. It's well worth it if you're preparing for an assignment. Are you going to be working together on it? Uh, I'm not sure. I would if I were you. You get so much more out of the assignment that way. But surely the tutors would notice that our essays were the same. No, no. I'm certainly not suggesting you should actually write the thing together.、Oh. I'm talking about when you first start on a big assignment. I think it's a good idea to find two or three others on the course who live near you, and divide up the reading load between you. Then you can meet up again a few days later, and take it in turns to summarize your reading for each other. At the next stage, we go round the group explaining our essay plans, which makes it easier for individuals then to go off and write the first draft of their essay on their own. Later on, we usually exchange drafts and give feedback in the group before finally writing our essays individually. Do you really do all that? Usually, yes. It makes the whole thing much easier and more enjoyable. Right. Well, I think I need another coffee before getting started.、Uh, can I get you one? Yes. Why not? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four.
Part 4. You will hear a talk by a university lecturer in Australia on a type of bird called a peregrine falcon. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. I'm Professor Sam Richards and I've come as the third guest lecturer on this course in Australian Birds of Prey. My job is to keep a watchful scientific eye on the state of Tasmanian peregrines. So I'll start by giving you some background to these magnificent birds of prey before I speak briefly on my own project. Peregrine falcons are found on all continents with the exception of Antarctica. So don't go looking for them at the South Pole. They're found almost everywhere in Australia and it's interesting to note that the name peregrine implies that they're wanderers, that they move from place to place following the seasons and indeed in most parts of the world they're migratory birds. But not in Australia however, where they prefer to stay in one place. They're known to be the world's fastest creature and they have been tracked by radar diving down towards the ground at 180 kilometres an hour. However, a number of textbooks claim that their flight speed can go as high as 350 kilometres an hour, so there's still some dispute about just how fast they can actually fly. Female peregrine falcons, like all other Australian falcons, are larger than their male counterparts. In fact, the female is almost a third larger than the male in the case of peregrines. While she stays close to the nest to protect the eggs and the young chicks, the male is mostly occupied looking for food. Peregrines typically lay two or three eggs per nest, and after the eggs have hatched, when the chicks are about 20 days old, they start to fly. So they fly at a very young age. By the time they're just 28 days old, they've already reached full adult size. In other words, they're fully grown. Soon after this, at about two months after hatching from the egg, they leave the nest for good. From this point on, they're on their own. Unlike their parents, which have learned how to hunt, the young falcons are not good at feeding themselves, and so during the first year about 60% of them die. Once the birds have managed to live to breeding age, at two years old, they generally go on to live for another six or seven years. When we come across nests with young chicks, the first thing we do is catch the chicks before they're able to fly. We have to catch them at an early age. We then attach identification rings to their legs. These rings are made of colour-coded aluminium, and they allow us to identify the birds through binoculars later in their lives. Thirdly, because we need to know how many males and how many female chicks are being born, we note the sex of the chicks. Noting the sex of the birds is a vital part of our research, as I will discuss later. The next thing to do is to take a blood sample from the chicks. We take the blood sample so that we can check the level of pesticide in their bodies. Peregrine falcons can build dangerous quantities of pesticides in their bloodstream by feeding on smaller mammals, which in turn feed on crops grown on farms where pesticides are used. Finally, we check the birds thoroughly, really checking the birds for their general health. This whole process only takes a few minutes. In fact, most of our time in the field is actually spent trying to find the nests, not on the data collection itself. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you'd like to do some further reading... That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.